Okay, folks, harvested a real nice buck. I'm gonna get it uh, mounted. You're out in a remote area. You know, perhaps you know how to do a basic cape, one that would typically end in taking off the deer at the neck and taking the whole cape and head skin into your taxidermist so they could finish the job for you. But if you're in a remote area or if you're in a CWD positive state or have regulations in transport back to your home state, you obviously have to get to the brain matter because that's the infectious material. So to do that, you're gonna need to learn how to do a full cape, one completely off the head. That gives you access to the skull so you can skull cap at that point, get the brain matter out and meet those CWD regulations. A lot of hunters are very intimidated with this part of the process. Many get comfortable with kind of the basic half cape process, but really are intimidated by doing the full face skin, ears and all. So I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step today, make it real simple for you. All right, we're gonna talk about the cuts we're gonna make here today. A lot of hunters make a mistake and cut far too much of the, the back of their cape. All you need is about a six inch incision where this tape is referenced here. And of course, that's just gonna give us enough, enough uh, cape to kind of work around the ears and, and get the facial skin started. And it comes down and makes a V or a Y shape pattern, basically allowing us to go out to each pedicle and work that tissue, that hair around each one. So that's all the cuts you have to make. The key to a successful caping job, obviously, is having the right tools. And today I'm gonna to use two different knives from Outdoor Edge. One is the four inch caping knife, really good for some of the bigger work as I get down towards the ear and that sort of thing. Kind of gives me a little bit of extra backbone. As I get down to the fine work, the Razorlite EDC is really the go. It's a replaceable blade, super sharp, fine detail. Good tools make a good cape. As you can see, I've now made it down to about to where I want to make my first cut. I've skinned it down without making any cuts to this point. I'm going to roll it back up here so you can see it. So I'm, I'm going to skin to about here. I'm going to make my cut starting about there, going to, again, roughly just off center, behind center, the base of the antlers, and then we're going to make a Y to each pedicle. When making this cut, be sure to start and go with the hair. Go backwards toward the back of the animal. So again, start roughly between the back of the antlers, between the antlers, going straight up the middle and make about a six to eight inch incision. Again, don't make a cut all the way up the, the back of your cape, it's way too much work for the taxidermist. So again, got a nice, nice incision here. From here, we're gonna make a, a short incision over to the base of each antler. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. All right, we've made our initial cuts, including our Y. Time now to take the neck off and actually transition to the bench where you can really uh, get around the, the head. Again, we took the neck off with about probably five or six inches of neck uh, meat still attached. That's important that our cut is the same length or slightly longer than that because we're gonna have to cup and sock that hide around it and work our way forward. So our first, our first obstacle is the ears. Uh, so we're gonna go through the ears and, and remove that and then we're gonna work around the two pedicles. That's some delicate work. Okay, I'm gonna take the deer's left ear off now. Uh, and again, you want to use your finger to really feel the base of that ear. And you don't want to come cutting back towards, you want to make sure you get all that ear you can. So basically you're just going to come down the side of the skull itself and you'll feel it cut right through that little ear canal. It's just cartilage. Uh, again, being careful though, because we want to preserve all this, this hair around your pedicle. So you may have to kind of work in conjunction with that, pulling the hair backwards away before you make a cut. So always use your finger to pull that hair back away and make sure you're getting right against that pedicle. Get as much of that, that hair as you can. See, I've done that just nice and neat away from that. Again, going through the ear butt, you can see the ear canal there, opening up. Now I've got the entire ear, lots of extra tissue, which is fine, because that's what the taxidermist would rather have too much to work with than too little. Okay, now I've got the, uh, both of the ears cut through. I've got the, the back side of the hair that adjoins the base of the pedicle removed very carefully, so I got all of that. The next process is to cup the skin around it, which I've done, so I've actually pulled the skin through, and I'm gonna work my way forward towards the front of the face. Again, helps a lot to grab it and keep a nice firm grip, so when you're cutting, you actually really can get to that fine detail and do the job right. As you can see, I now have all of the, the, uh, the hide removed around the base of the left antler. Uh, I've got it through the ear butt, my next major obstacle is the eye socket. And it's really important that you take your time here. And using a sharp replaceable blade like the razor light is perfect for the job. If you wanna get that eyelid and eyelashes and all that so that that fine detail is evident in your trophy. The key to getting the eye right is not to come, again, cutting back toward you. You wanna actually be cutting into the eye socket almost at a, almost at a, or a vertical angle to it. Again, you're gonna cut through, you'll see the eye. Uh, again, you're trying to get as much of it as you can. The center of the eye is not the important bit, it's the, the bit around it, but you want to get all the tissue that surrounds it. So 
as you're cutting around, just keep cutting through. You're gonna cut right through the eye. And I like to, once I got an incision, is just to pull that through. Again, cutting back towards the eye, you're gonna get more than you need. And then the, the big important part is as you're coming to the very end, you got a tear duct here. So what you wanna do is, again, using the, the, the very fine part of your knife, uh, placeable blade works great for this. Just keep pulling it forward, cutting through all that. Right there. And then you actually kind of want to dig it in to that eye socket, that uh, or preorbital gland. Just take your time, cut, cut. It'll almost be cutting into the bone itself at that point. It feels a little awkward, but that way you get down into the into the, the recesses of that gland. We got past probably the hardest part of the whole process. We've gotten through the ears, we've gotten through the eyes, we got through the tear ducts. As you can see, there's no eyelashes or tissue left almost no hair at all around the pedicle. That means we've done a good job. That's what you want to, want to strive for. Now it gets pretty easy until we get to the nose. Uh, it's really just a matter of coming down the bone. The, the hide's actually pretty thin along the, the lower and upper jaws. So just a matter of just following the bone and peeling it just like you would anything else. All right. Now we're getting down to the juncture of where the tissue from the upper and the lower jaw come together. And that's another important part. Uh, taxidermists don't use a lot of that in their mounts, but they do need some of that tissue to work with. So again, be as generous, if in doubt, get as much as you can for your taxidermist. That actually starts a little farther back than where often your knife will come out. So I'm gonna cut back just a little bit. You'll see where the, the jaw actually starts back here. Make sure that I, again, give the taxidermist plenty to work with. They can always discard it. You open up that lower jaw like so. You just want to take that forward with, with your cape, both sides. So we got the lower jaw, lower jaw exposed. We got plenty of, of that uh, gum tissue for the taxidermist to work with. And then after that, you just keep coming down. You're going to get the same tissue on the upper, upper jaw, around that upper jaw. So just bring all that forward. I like to sometimes just put my finger in there to kind of as a guide to give me a little tension and just excise it straight off the jaw. All right, now we've skinned down the upper and lower jaws. You can see we got vast majority of that gum tissue that we wanted for the tax numbers to have plenty to work with around the mouth. Now I'm almost to the nose. And you can actually, when you get down to the end of the, the nose, you actually can feel where the bone stops and the nose starts. We're almost there, and when I get there, I'm not gonna just kinda cut at an angle, I'm gonna cut almost straight back into it to get all that nose I possibly can. So as soon as, as soon as your knife, as soon as you leave the bone and you can get some soft tissue, that's when you're gonna come back in, back in at an angle into the animal. You're gonna cut, work your knife around, get as much as you can. Just keep working it down. You can go through some cartilage there. That's what you want. Again, better to get too much than not enough. It's a good rule of thumb. Okay, folks, this is the finished product we we're looking for. We've got a beautiful cape. It's, again, it's only cut from about six inches back, so we don't have a lot of stitch work for the taxidermist to do on our cape. We've got a V shape to our two antlers. We've got the ears. Got all of the eyelids, eyelashes, whiskers, all of the nose. Got plenty of the, uh, the tissue along the gum. The, so the fine detail is perfect for your taxidermist to work with. Final step, uh, if you're obviously in a CWD area and have to remove the brain matter, which many hunters do today before they can leave, would be to skull cap this animal. Again, they don't need any of the rest of the skull because they're gonna be using a, a, an artificial form underneath there. So simply skull cap your animal, remove the brain tissue, and you're good to go.